So in my last video, you can see me kind of laboring with this uh, big uh, flat board on my scroll saw, but eventually I get it all cut out and I have three lemurs, one reaching for fruit, one hanging upside down, and then down here I got one guy attached to a tree. So now that it's all roughed out, I can start planning how I actually want to carve this piece. So it starts with this first level that's sticking straight out. That's why I have number one, uh, two, He's attached to this tree, so that tree's got to be further back. But the problem is, further up the tree, I have this other lemur behind it. So I've got to figure out how to get all these depths correct so it looks like one continuous piece. Um, yeah, the best way to do it is just get started. So I knew that this tree down where I'm carving now has to go back the farthest. That's the one I'm going to start with. I, I you know. When you have a big project like this, you just gotta jump in sometimes. So I'm just taking my rotary bit and I'm carving away. So I guess I should say it now, this entire carving is done with power. Um, this board and boards similar like it that you might find at a craft store is typically all end grain and it is just really tough to carve with hand tools. So this is a good project for um, power. So if you're one of those purists and don't like watching power videos, I suggest trying another one. So using this carbide bit, I'm just going around on all the trees and I'm basically just rounding the tree shape. Uh, it's not, nothing too fancy. I'm just being a little cautious here because I have this vine climbing up this tree. Uh, but other than that, it's just kind of setting the depth back and getting that rounded shape, which you kind of do at the same time. Uh, once you kind of, I got the gist of the shapes that I was going for, I just went around the entire carving just to set the depth back. I'm not really worried about shapes or any details yet. I'm just trying to find that depth. Um, and it's a cool process, because as you'll see, it starts to become from a really flat two-dimensional piece, and it really starts getting some dimension. So I have a while to go with this, but I always find this is the stage for me where I actually can start to visualize the ending of what this carving looks like. I mean, I have a rough idea in my head of what this is going to look like, but it's not until I really start removing this wood and giving a good shape that I can really visualize all the aspects of the carving. Now that the trees are pretty much roughed out, I'm starting to look at these lemurs. I decided to start with this guy in the bottom. So the first step is just going to be rounding out all those corners or edges, I should say. And I'm gonna start doing that by putting a nice line underneath the chin uh, so I can start rounding the body and those shoulders so they go towards the chin. It's kind of a hard thing to describe, but you kind of see as I'm carving here, I have it on a bit of an angle, so the shoulders will round under because uh, the head and chin have to look like they're sticking out. So to do this and get this effect really accurately with a thin piece of wood like this, I'm constantly taking measurements, uh, redrawing in my lines because I'm going for accuracy here for these red rough lemurs. So I'm using this one reference photo specifically for this lemur. Um, and I'm just going for those basic shapes, rounding, finding where the leg muscles are, getting that back nice and rounded, um, separating the elbow from the chest. And then I could start going in and looking at some more of the facial features. So I just use a ball uh, tip and I'm just kind of not very aggressive, but I'm just kind of working the wood, kind of making those eye sockets and bringing that nose out. As you can see, there is not a lot of wood to work with, so I can't stress it enough. Sometimes if you're not seeing it, you just got to walk away from that part and try something else. So at that point, I just said, let me get these hands separated. Um, it was also at that point that the little micro, um, what do you call it, the micro rotary tool that I had just kind of stopped working. So I went back to my old faithful Dremel and I continued carving with that. I thought this would be a good spot to stop and show the progress so far. I've got the bottom lemur roughed out. I've got this hanging guy roughed out. Uh, and that brings me to this guy up top. Uh, basically, I'm having a bit of a struggle figuring out how I want to carve this one 
I am really excited to do this because it looks like he's going for that piece of fruit. So I, really, I wanted to take my time and um, not be too hasty. So I'm at the point where I'm looking at the details. I need to figure out what I want to do uh, with this tail right here. I know it's going to go behind these leaves. Uh, I have this little, these leaves over here, which I can't carve yet because uh, that screw is how I'm mounting it to my board. Uh, but once I get those set in, I could figure out the depth of the leg, the final depth of the leg, and everything else will kind of come together. I can get this tree set in, uh, that tail up there I can get going, and I can just work my way up the carving. Uh, so to do these leaves, my process is I'll start with number one. That's the leaves that are farthest, uh, farthest out from the board. Uh, then I'll go to two, level two, uh, following by obviously level three. That's set back a little further. And the furthest level back is this number four, and that's going to give it that depth so the lemur look, looks like he's coming out of the leaves. So these leaves are finally roughed out. Uh, I drew the numbers back on, so you can see one is kind of, you know, sticking out more, two set back further, three even more, and then four back in the way distance. And it already is giving more depth. I have to give more detail, obviously, but having that depth is gonna be really helpful. Um, zooming in, I can already kind of start to see it taking more shape. Um, I have to get in there and uh, cut that tail back. I think that's really going to help it pop out more and make him look like he's coming out of those leaves. Uh, but now it's my favorite part, getting into these details. So I start with this really um, thin bit. It's, it's pretty flat, has a nice point to it, so I can get in there and get some of these details now. Uh, these red rough lemurs have a pretty pronounced wrinkle on their forehead. So I'm just going in, roughing out that shape, and I'm going around and rounding the eyes. Um, as you can see, I'm not being aggressive. I'm taking my time. Um, it's hard to see how round they actually are, but in actuality, I do most of the rounding in a later stage um, that I'll show you in the next video. So I took this picture to kind of show uh, the contrast and some of the details I've put in so far. I'm now at the stage where I've taken the carving off the mount. I'll back on the saw and I'm gonna to commit to some of those leaves and branches that I left for some more stability while I was doing the majority of the carving. Cutting out the rest of those leaves and branches was like unlocking a, a door for me. I was able to now see this carving and, and get ready to complete it. Also, having it off the mount, yeah, it really helps me speed along, round out those edges, uh, start undercutting and the carving to me now is really starting to take shape and this is all the fun part It's like the, the icing on top of the cake uh, Just excuse the bare legs. It's like 95 degrees July in New Jersey. I'm working in my garage and It's pretty hot So I didn't get too much of the process, but I've got the carving done um, I have a little more touch-ups to do, but the basic hair lines, the texture is where I want it. Um, I have to get in there a little more on the tail, but you can see that's textured all the way down. Uh, the trees are cut back, everything's sanded. It's starting to really take shape. Uh, this guy was real fun to do. Um, the hair pattern is interesting on him, so I'm going to now spend some time uh, showing how I do that. The first step in carving hair is really taking time to study the animal. Uh, this lemur is obviously a very furry creature. Its hair is going in all kinds of crazy directions. Uh, when the muscle changes or the way it's bent can change the pattern of the hair. So getting this roughed in there with your pencil first is key. So then when you start carving, there's no guesswork. You've already done the study and you're just following the lines that you drew in. 
I'm not going crazy with the detail here because I'm going to go back in with my burner uh, in the next video and I'll show you how I do the hair. With the hair carved, I take a scotch Brite pad on my Dremel and I just kind of roughly go over what I just carved and this is a great technique to get rid of those fuzzies that happen to you know always stick around when you're power carving. Uh, just be careful, don't apply too much pressure because it will remove all that detail you just carved. Again, this is just to get those fuzzies off because when you sand, you'll lose the detail too. Um, so it keeps it in there and then I can go back in with my burner and kind of refine everything. The last step is just going around and carving out some of the fruit and leaves, making sure the branches are rounded out the way I want. And I'm in the home stretch of this carving and get, getting ready to start uh, putting the finishing touches on it. So the last thing I actually carved on this uh, are these ferns. So I'm just taking a flat disc and just cutting in the leaves or the prongs. Uh, I don't know, what do you call those? I guess prongs of a fern. And um, that's gonna make them pop. And as you'll see in a second, it really has come to life. And it just needs a little bit of burning for some detail and some paint. All propped up, you can see this has come a long way. Uh, there's a lot of detail, a lot of texture, fur, bark, the different branches, the leaves, and when you throw that paint out, it starts coming to life. So stay tuned for the next video uh, where I go into how I use my burner and paints to finish this carving.